Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Nice to see everyone up and out this morning. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Is the microphone on? I can't tell if it's on or not. We're delighted that you've chosen. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> We're delighted that you've chosen to join us for outdoor worship this morning here in Palm Springs. And we'd like to extend a special Sabbath greeting to those who will be joining us for our online service this afternoon. Your pastoral team and your church leaders are here to support you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can be of service to you. <clears throat> this morning, Pastor Mario begins a three-week series entitled, Follow Me. Following Jesus is the greatest decision we can make. We're preparing for his soon coming kingdom. May we each accept that invitation today. This morning, we have a number of prayer requests that I think, I can't see the board here, but I think they're posted on the board. Um, and they're also in your church, church newsletter. So please remember to lift these folk up in prayer um, <clears throat> that their needs might be met from day to day. Our church newsletter provides a weekly update on our facility renovation project fundraiser. Our new kitchen cabinets, which were delivered several weeks ago, um, are going to be installed this coming week. Some of us that have been waiting and waiting are really excited about that. <clears throat> we, of course, still need a little over $6,000 to reach our $70,000 fundraising goal so that we can replace our main entry doors. Uh, the doors that you see here have been in place for nearly 50 years, and they've sort of um, gotten to the point where they can't be repaired anymore. And I'm speaking of repairing the locking mechanism in them, which is very important. And so we're anxious to get our new doors installed. Uh, we appreciate your generous support to help keep God's house in order. And if you'd like to contribute to the fundraiser, um, put it in a tithe envelope under facility renovation projects. During this holiday season, our Palm Springs Church is supporting Loma Linda University Children's Hospital's Big Hearts for Little Hearts Desert Guilds Legos Project. I don't know how many of you are aware, but Children's Hospital opened a pediatric clinic here in Indio about two years ago. And that is a very busy spot. They see more than 3,600 patients a year. And during this holiday season, the clinic is giving a gift of Legos to each patient who comes for treatment. And so we're supporting that project by donating boxed Legos, or if you prefer, you can make a cash donation. And if you do that, please mark your tithe envelope for Legos so that your funds will go to the right project. We really appreciate that. And if you'd like to donate a box of Legos, you can see me and I'll be certain um, that they get over to the clinic. I have a few boxes at home right now that are waiting to be delivered. Um, during this season of outdoor worship, our deacons are not passing offering plates. Um, but you may have noticed when you came in today that on each of the entry tables, there's a basket that's clearly marked for offerings, which is where you will want to place your donations. And you'll also find next to that basket another basket that has a supply of offering envelopes. And you should feel free to use those. And if you care to take a supply of them home with you, please feel free to do that. Today's special offering is for our conference-wide church and school building fund, which provides needed funds for building churches and schools within our Southeastern California Conference. Gifts for this special offering should be clearly marked on your offering envelopes for the conference building fund. 
Our local church budget, of course, is always a high priority, <clears throat> and all of the loose and unmarked offerings will uh, go to our local church budget. You will also want to remember that there are other ways of um, returning your support for our ministry here. Of course, you can go on to uh, our church website and donate through Adventist Giving, which is a very convenient way, and many of you have been using it, particularly during our pandemic. Um, many of us use online bill pay, and you certainly feel, should feel free to continue doing that. And finally, always feel free to just mail a check directly here to the church and it will be cared for properly. Um, and speaking of uh, contributing and supporting, I'd just like to remind you that we as a church are supporting five of our young people with tuition assistance this school year. They are attending Desert Adventist Academy. And um, generally we have a number of means of providing that support, but it's more difficult now during the lockdown and that fund particularly needs our financial support. So I just like to remind you to help support our tuition assistance fund. Um, I pray that God will continue to bless each one of you for your generosity and supporting his ministry here in Palm Springs. And just a final reminder to our church ministry leaders, your 2021 church budget requests are due. And if you need assistance in preparing those requests for your ministries for next year, don't hesitate to call me or see me, and I'll be able to help you with that. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us this morning. God bless you. Thank you. Hi, church family. Happy Sabbath. It's so wonderful to see you all, to see your faces, well, half your faces, <laughs> and, uh, and just to be able to worship together. Um, you know, I've uh, reignited my, my joy for Sabbath and, and coming here and to see you all again, and um, I'm just so glad that we're all here to worship, and uh, we have so much to be thankful for, and we have so much to pray for, so let's um, bow our heads in prayer this morning as we uh, begin. Our loving God, you are gracious and merciful and wonderful, and we praise you for the amazing and loving Father that you are. We thank you for all of the ways that you've cared for us, that you've provided for our needs, that you've um, supported us and, and encouraged us and strengthened us during this time. Um, we want to pray for all of those in our church family who are in attendance today and who um, have uh, maybe um, been separated from us during this time. We just pray for everyone who um, calls this place home, and we just uh, pray for their families and, and uh, that everyone might stay healthy. We pray for all of those in our uh, prayer request list. Um, Lord, they have different requests, different, um, different needs, and we just lift it all up to you, Lord. You um, know each and every um, care that we carry, and we just give it all to you and, um, and pray that you would carry it for us and, and for our, our loved ones who have struggled with so many things this year. Um, we want to pray for um, just this worship service, Lord, that it would continue to bless those who attend and those who watch us and join us online. Um, we thank you so much for um, just this opportunity to gather and to um, be a, you know, a physical church family again and to um, just see each other and, and, um, and remember what it was like to, um, to share in the joy of, of what's going on in each other's lives, to connect in the way that we have been able to now that we are worshiping outdoors. And so we thank you for this opportunity. We pray for um, the, the pastor, Pastor Mario, and the message that he's bringing to us, Lord. We pray that it would encourage us and strengthen us and be exactly what we need to keep going um, this week. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Um, it is now my uh, joy and privilege to introduce my brother-in-law, Daniel Olmedo. He um, is, I mean, I think the first time I met him, he was playing music. And so uh, so I, we go way back, and, and then he ended up being my brother-in-law. And so um, it's good to have him here, and we're just so grateful that he's going to share and bless us this morning. Happy Sabbath, church family. It was, um, it felt good waking up early this morning and uh, reaching for my slacks and not sweatpants, uh, throwing on a button up and actually combing my hair instead of wearing a hat. Quarantine has been weird, <laughs> but it's been a blessing it's, uh, to come here and share some music with you guys. And yes, it was definitely the first time I met Danielle, and actually one of the first times I hung out with Pastor Mario. We were at Arlington Church at the Vine, and he opened up the doors to let some young people do some crazy music things, and I was one of them. And fast forward like 10 or 12 years, and we're still doing the same thing. <laughs> um, the song I'm going to sing this morning is called uh, Street called Mercy, and I had the privilege of going to um, Walking Old Jerusalem a few years ago and walking through the street called Mercy, um, the path that Jesus walked um, on the way to Golgotha carrying his, um, his cross. And I know uh, Pastor Mario is going to be talking about how we should be following Jesus, but before Jesus asked us to follow him, he led the way, and that is something um, so beautiful and so meaningful, um, and I hope you are blessed this morning. Tired of endless walking, not knowing which way to go. I collapsed on a street called Mercy. I was found in you. Throwing your arms around me, you held me like I was yours. Like you'd been there the whole time waiting. I was found in you. You're all I want, you are all I need. Every breath I take is a breath to say, I am yours now forever. You are all I want, you are all I need. Every breath I take is a breath to say, I am yours now forever. in your scarlet kindness you welcome the sinner home now i breathe in the air of heaven All i want is you keep me within your shadows you tether my heart to yours i want nothing without your presence all i want is you for all i want you're all I need. Every breath I take is a breath to say, I am yours now forever. We're all I want. We're all I need. Every breath you take is a breath to say, I am yours now forever.
Every breath I take is a breath to say, I am yours now forever. Check one, two. You know, I think what's so great about uh, being outside is uh, Uncle Tony doesn't have to run so much. If you remember how he would run in the... But, uh, anyway, Daniel, thank you so much for being here. Uh, what Pastor Daniel didn't mention uh, was that when I first met Daniel, I didn't know him as Daniel. I, I knew him as good times. That's what, <laughs> that's what they call you. And Daniel, you are. So, uh, but uh, hey, church, good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's so great to to have you all here today, an opportunity to worship with, uh, with you this morning. I, I see some faces today, like Pastor Danielle said, half faces. But uh, I'll tell you, it's so, it's so good to, uh, to be together with your Thanksgiving good. Amen. Don, was it good? Just, just give me a little, yes, it was. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I thought was really neat, uh, we have a new addition to our Palm Springs Church family. And I want to kind of bring you guys over here to the monitor. Uh, what, 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 this little guy here is Joseph Daniel Zeroth. So this little guy was born at 1134 last night, right? So he was born to uh, Daniel and Blanca Zeroth. Uh, let's see, his fighting weight. Can we go to the next slide? So his fighting weight, let's see here, is uh, 6 pounds, 13 ounces, uh, 18 inches. All right, yeah, so, so he, he arrived last night. What I think is really neat, too, is this morning, uh, my father-in-law is here today, so if you guys want to keep the amens coming, that would be great, um, but uh, it's actually his birthday today, so Chris, I wanted to say happy birthday to you. I was running out of the house uh, this morning, and I wished them all happy, happy Sabbath, but I didn't say happy birthday, so that's on me. But, uh, but anyway, it's good to have uh, everybody here. It's good to be together. And uh, hey, I am, we are so excited to begin a series that we are entitling uh, Follow Me. Follow Me, how life, and I love how, how, how Andy Joyce said, it, you know, is drastically different when we are living a life following Jesus. And so, you know, this morning, I, I actually kind of want to take you to a passage. Um, I love this little verse. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Um, I want to kind of come around this verse this morning, and, and really we're kind of finding it, we're going to jump in mid-reading, mid mid-writing, and Peter writes this in verse 6, he says, therefore humble yourself under the mighty head of God, that he may exalt you in due time, and, and here is the verse that I want us to think about, verse 7, it says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. For you, I think that's beautiful. All right, now what I want to do is I want to rewind a little bit. I want to rewind a little bit. I want to go to Luke chapter 5, reading from verse 1. And church, I'll tell you, this is a beautiful story. Verse 1 reads, So it was, the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. So he sat down, and he taught the multitude from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Hey, launch out to the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon answered him and said, Master, we've, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. And you're a carpenter, carpenter and, I'm a, and I'm a fisherman. Hello. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let it down. I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they, that they both began to sink. When Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet or at knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish. When they had taken, 
And so also were James and John and the sons of Zebedee who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they brought their boats to the land, and listen to this verse right here, they forsook all and followed him. They forsook all and followed him. You know, this, this morning, church, what I'd like to do this morning, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about, um, about cares, right, about our concerns, about kind of the, the, the subject that I'd kind of want to look at is how do we cast our cares, the cares in our lives. And before we pray, I just want to say just a couple of opening statements to kind of set up a framework around what I'd love for us to think about this morning. And, it, and it's this, that every one of us this morning or, or online, we've all arrived with, with different cares. We've all arrived with different concerns. Every one of us this morning, we all have them. You know, in fact, for, they're far more real ladies than the purses that, that you brought. You know, gentlemen, they're far more real than the Hawaiian shirts that maybe some of us used to, used to wear that we have on our backs. These concerns, these issues, these pending problems or pending responsibilities in our lives are very, uh, very real, very real. And we all have them. We all have them. And it's just a matter of a fact of life. It's part of the existence here that we have on this wonderful planet called Earth. We all have a collection of cares that we have brought today. It's unseen, but it's far more real than which we can see. You know, when I start talking about cares, for some of us, it may be financially related. For some, it may be physically related. For some of us, it may be socially or relationally related. For some of us, it may be emotionally or internally related, the things that are going on in our lives. And so this is what I kind of want to talk about, I want to talk about today. Because the invitation to follow me, right, the invitation that the Lord has given us, the idea of living with Jesus, of following Jesus, yielding our lives to the Lord and his will for our, our life should drastically affect the everyday, average, ordinary cares of this life. And so this morning, I want to talk about these collection of cares, these, these collection of cares that we walked in with, that we arrived with, and how we relate to them, right? How we deal with them, how we handle them, how are we dealing with these cares of life, because well, First Peter five seven says we need to cast them onto to Jesus. We need to throw them on Jesus. We need to hawk them on Him. And that's what I'd like us to think about this morning. Hey, would you pray with me? Let me get going. God, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to be together. And Lord, what a blessing it is to be here in community. Lord, we thank you for um, for being a God who is. Uh, present in our everyday life. And Father, I pray that as we continue in your word, Lord, I just pray that we, well, we, Lord, we leave here built up. We leave here encouraged. And we thank you so much for the hope that we have through your word and through your son. These things we ask in his name. Amen. Uh, hey, so has this ever happened to you? Like, have you ever, have you ever gone, like, upstairs to your house, if you have a two-story house, or maybe gone into the kitchen of your house, and upon arriving, you kind of forget why you're there? Has that ever happened? Is that ever? Is that ever well, that's a sign of age, yes, but, but it's also a sign, I think, of the human condition. It's a sign. It's kind of funny. It happened to me a few, a few little while ago. I was downstairs at my parents' house, and I literally, to this day, I cannot remember why I went upstairs. I was downstairs, but I was so compelled and so moved by something that was upstairs, of which I still can't remember, that, that I had literally got up. I, I walked all the way upstairs, walked into the room that we were staying in, and upon arrival, it just dawned on me, I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> so there was some candy in the room, so I just had some candy, right? Uh, but, but it happens, right? You, you walk up, you get into the room, and obviously whatever it was that brought you there, again, that I still can't remember, was so considerable. It was so uh, meaningful that it physically moved us into a different context. Like, it physically moved us into a different space. But when you got there, evidently, something else had eclipsed that all that was important or something else that 
And you know, listen, I'll tell you, it happens to me quite often because I have a propensity to be distracted repeatedly. That's my wife. So this happens quite a bit. All of a sudden, you go in there and something has just eclipsed it. You know, in Luke chapter 5, in the 10 verses that we read today, it's a, it's a fantastic passage. It's a great passage, but it, you know, it just kind of frustrates me. It, it, it just, it kind of frustrates me, and I need to kind of set it up. And I think one of the reasons that Luke 5 is frustrating me is because I, uh, I tend to be a both and type of guy. I'm a, and, if, and if I'm honest, I'm also kind of a both and kind of dad. And I'm not sure if you know what I mean by that. I, when our girls, they'll, they'll say, hey, daddy, today is treat day. It's treat day, daddy. Can, can we have donuts and ice cream? And I'm like, yeah. yeah we, yes, Absolutely. You know, grandma's not here to say no. Like, absolutely, we can have that. Sarah is clearly the responsible one in our relationship. So she's like, no, 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 no. We, we either do ice cream or donuts. Okay, we don't do both. We do either, we do either or, right? So please pray for me. But, uh, you know, can't we do it all? Like, can't we, can't, can't, we, can't we have our cake and eat it too, right? Like, I've always wondered about that one. Like, if you had a cake... Well, like, wouldn't you eat it? Like, I never understood that I'm, I, I don't have much sleep that I'm operating from right now. So, but, uh, but yeah, I'm a both and type of guy. Now, when you look, look at Luke chapter 5, the story that we just read, now Jesus is teaching. And Peter's there. Again, Peter is, again, he's a pro fisherman. He's Simon at the time. And they're washing the nets. And, and, and Jesus comes up to Simon and says, hey, look, I'd like to use your boat can you push off a little bit? He pushed off, and again, water is a natural amplification. Jesus is teaching. He's preaching. And then he says to Simon, hey, Simon, I'd like you to, to kind of go out a little bit. I'd like you to push out a little bit. I'd like you to go fishing. I'd like you to go do some fishing. And, and again, Peter, he's probably here a little annoyed. He's probably like, like really like carpenter Jesus. Like you, <laughs> you're going to tell me, pro fisherman Simon, how, uh, this is great, my friend, but let me tell you how it works. You, you, you fish at night. Like, you don't fish during the day. Like, like, you fish at night. We fished at night, and there were no fish to be had. And in fact, the New King James Version uses the word toiled. A little bit of frustration here, a little bit of agitation. He says, look, we've toiled, okay, like we've, we've tried. We've really tried but you want us to, and I think Simon at this point is like, okay, because you said so, carpenter, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll do a little fishing. Now at the mention, okay, at the command of Jesus, they go fishing. And again, we, we know the story that they have this incredible catch of fish, probably to date the single greatest catch in that body of water. Peter, Simon at this point, again, pro fisherman who who's been born and raised again born and raised fishing like this is what he does seven verses later church this is what what frustrates me here about this passage about this verse seven verses later he walks away from the greatest pile of fish he's ever seen and this is my thought just my initial thought upon reading this passage my just my initial view of reading this passage, I thought, Jesus, Jesus, before we run off here, why don't we utilize the revenue, right, that's on the beach here? It could go a long way. First off, it could be a lot of breakfasts, lunches, and dinners for all of us. Or second, how about we sell those little guys, right? Like, we'd make, we'd make a killing. But Peter, Simon Peter, who, again, whose whole life is centered around fish and catching them. Only seven verses. It only takes seven verses. And this pro fisherman is walking away from the greatest catch of fish that he has ever heard of, let alone seen. You know, again, how, I, when, I, when I read that, I, I mean, if we stop a moment, again, again, Simon Peter was raised... He has grown up his whole life obsessed with fish. 
this is the catch, church. This is the catch that, again, he probably always dreamed about. And now he's walking away, and it's in his rearview mirror. It's as if he doesn't even care. Like, how? How? The word of God reads, they forsook all and followed Jesus. You know, this week as I was kind of reading that, um, I think, you know, it, to me that just tells us something about, the, about how incredibly beautiful and captivating and compelling Jesus is. Again, Simon has grown up, like I said a moment ago, obsessed with fish and Yet in this moment, this is essentially the final call, of his, call to his disciples. And Peter, again, in this moment, he is so incredibly captured and compelled and so caught up with Jesus that evidently he doesn't even care about the very thing that has consumed his life for years. You know, in 1 Peter 5, 7, and, you know, I'd never really looked at it quite like this before, but the verse, verse 7, it uses this Greek word to cast, and, and it literally means to throw, right? To take your concerns, uh, your collection of cares that we may have right now, whether we admit it or we don't, to take our collection of cares and just throw them on Jesus. And, and, and here's what I had never really thought about before, is that, church, God has a way of taking our cares or our concerns, and when we throw them on him, when we cast them on him before we know it, when we throw it on him, we never go back to him or we forget about him or we don't care about them anymore. Our whole value system begins to change. You know, I'll hear some people say, well, you know, when, when it comes to casting our cares, like don't I cast and I kind of work on them and then Jesus kind of works on them and it's kind of like, you know, teamwork makes the dream work, you know. No, that's not what First Peter says. Peter says, look, hey, put it all on him. And I just want to say, when we start participating in this spiritual activity of giving God our cares, of, of giving God our, our concerns, which of course is done in a spiritual place called prayer, you know, when we go, God, you can have it, God, you can take it, this is yours. When we do that, we should be aware of something, church, that we may not care about it anymore. It, it, can, change, it can change everything. Listen to this verse here, in the, just in the kind of the context that we are speaking about today in Philippians 4, 6. And again, you, you, you know this. It says, be anxious for nothing. The word anxious here in the Greek, it means to divide, like subdivide issues and problems in our life. And it literally means to partition them off from God. And Paul says, look, don't do that. Put your whole pile of stuff before God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. And again, this is how we cast our cares by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Tell God your requests. Like, Lord, I, like, I really need this. You know, God, I really need a, a, a job. Lord, we, Lord, we want children. Or God, I, I really need some stability. Or God, I really need an income. Let your request be known. Now, the verse that you would think would follow should say something like, and God will address your requests. And God will answer you in his time. Right? Like that's the, the logical train of thought. But verse 7 says, when you tell God your specific requests, here's what happens. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <laughs> this, that God, we're praying for fish, and God gives us peace. <laughs> uh, that got me this week. We, we have a request, and God gives us an emotion. God, I really need... No, no, no. But the peace of God, it surpasses, it transcends what we think we want when we want it. And I'll give this peace that's rooted in my son, Jesus Christ, I'll give you, I'll give you peace. Hey, how many of you today listen to country music? Just by a show of hands. Okay, we'll pray for you. All right. 
1990, Garth Brooks wrote a song entitled Unanswered Prayers. Have you heard that before? And I remember I had a conversation with someone that said, well, hey, Pastor, how do you feel about unanswered prayers? And I'll tell you, I, I, I agree with Mr. Garth. I thank God for unanswered prayers. Can you imagine if God answered every prayer that we prayed? Right? I mean, today I'd be a race car driver married to Cindy Crawford, right? Like this is, you know, thank the Lord for unanswered prayers. One of the things that I love about our relationship with Jesus Christ is that there are prayers that we may pray that we may not have an answer for. But instead of giving us an answer, what God will do is that he will give us his peace. He'll give us his peace. And God, like, I, I need $500. I need it for my, for my bills. And, I, and listen, I believe that God is able to give us $500, right? You know, we ought to pray for that if that's what our need is. And I'm, I'm all for that, but that's not what the point I'm talking about. But we need to be careful because instead of $500, well, God may give you peace. And you know what? You know why we want $500? Because we think that $500 is going to give us peace, right? But God will just go ahead and give you peace in the midst of our storm. You know, Jesus is the one who the Bible says was asleep on a pillow in the middle of a storm in a boat. And, and this, is, this storm is so crazy that pro-fishermen think that they're going to die, and where is Jesus? He's taking a nap. Right? He's taking a nap. I, I want to know what it is to have peace like that. You know, in 2001, I was uh, in seminary, and we did a, uh, a six-week field school in White Marsh, Maryland. Everybody been in White Marsh, Maryland. We were out there for six weeks doing field school, and I had two of my classmates, and we were staying in a, in a church member's home for those six weeks. We got to know them well, and I remember one, um, uh, one evening we were sitting around having dinner, and we started talking about family, and they said, no, it's just the two of us. We, um, we had a little girl, but she's sleeping in Jesus right now. And I, I remember when we heard that, we had no idea they had a little girl. And it's one of those things when somebody says that, you're not even sure how to respond. You know, I was in my early 20s. I wasn't sure how to respond to what they had said. And I, you know, I kind of think about it now, and I, I can't think of anything worse in this life than losing a child. And as we were kind of sitting there, we weren't really sure what we were going to say. And I remember they said, no, 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 no. Hey, God is, God is still good. Hey, God's grace is still good. I, hey, I'm going to see my little baby again. I know I'm going to see my little baby again. And, and you know, as I was thinking about that this, this week, I thought, you know, that, that's amazing. Like, have you ever met a Christian like that? that things get worse and they seem to get better, right? I mean, things are getting crazier and they seem to get more peaceful and some people, they just can't understand that. They just can't understand how they respond the way they respond. And I thought maybe some people were saying that to, to Peter, like, Peter, what are you doing? Like, what are, Peter, you've lived your whole life, your whole life for this catch. Like, where are you going? Why why are you walking away from this? This is gold right here. And Peter doesn't even look back. He doesn't even look back. And Jesus has just become so real to Peter. And I, and I think that what ends up happening in this life is that, church, when Jesus becomes so real, when his love becomes so palatable and so personable, that you honestly walk away from things that you've spent your whole life trying to attain. And people socially may not even understand. They may go, hey, hold, like, why, hold, like, you finally got the office. Like, you, you, you finally got the promotion. You finally got the status, the recognition. Why are you walking away from this? It's like you've worked your whole life to get to some place, and then once you get there, you forgot 
why you were even there. It's because something so much more marvelous has eclipsed our passion. And this is, you know, why I love Scripture. Because this happens over and over in Scripture again. You remember Mary in John chapter 12. Mary, again, is so compelled in the presence of Jesus. She, she goes into her room and she takes the most costly thing to her in her life. She brings out this perfume, this box of perfume. She brings it to Jesus and she just pours it on him. She just pours it on him. The Bible says in John 12 that this would have been about a year's wages. Bye-bye, Abby. About a year's wages. And she, she just brings this, and she just pours it on Jesus. And, 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 and Judas, he, he's like, hey, look, this is ridiculous. Why, why aren't we giving that to the poor? And Judas didn't care about the poor. We, we know that he was embezzling money from, from Jesus. And, you know, people don't understand why Mary is doing what she's doing. It's like, Mary, don't you even care? Like, I, I did. I did care. I, I worked hard for it. Like, I loved it. I was proud of it. But, but now, because of him, what I cared about so deeply, it's as if I've forgotten about it. You know, I was writing in my notes this week. I said, you know, I, um, as I was reflecting on, on, on thankfulness, you know, I, I put in my notes, I, I don't, I guess one of my fears is I don't want to be a type of Christian who is really good at doing church. I come to church and, hey, good morning, happy Sabbath. And I'm really good at that. And I'm really good at those spiritual moments, but in my everyday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't really know Jesus in those moments. See, I need him to eclipse my worries and my anxieties and my fears and my stresses. I want to be a dad that cares about Jesus the most. I want to be a husband that cares about... I don't want to be moved by these temporal, insignificant things. I don't want to live my life for fish and perfumes. Like I <laughs> want to live my life for Jesus. And if I have perfume, great. Right? If I have fish, great. But I can take it and I can leave it because of him. You know, very quickly, again, this week I was reading a Zacchaeus. I mean, the story to the kids, the wee little man, he, Jesus says to him, look, I'm going to go to your house, and they go to his house, and, and something happens. If you have an opportunity just to kind of look at Luke 19, something happens, church, between verses 7 and 8. Something happens to Zacchaeus, where just one moment with Jesus, Zacchaeus gives everything up. And I put in my notes, I want to discover right there what's lodged between verses 7 and 8. I want to experience that type of compelling capturing relationship with Jesus. I, I want to know what it's like when things and possessions and pains and issues of this life no longer garner or hold my preoccupation. I want to know that. I want to know what it's like. I want to know what it's like to love Jesus this way, where you leave piles of fish behind or you pour out expensive perfume because you just want to follow him. You just want to follow him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close in, in, in Philippians 3. Philippians 3, again, I, I love what Paul writes. Paul is a Jew among Jews. This is after he explains his pedigree, his background, how sophisticated and educated and, and this influence that he had and his rigorous adherence to the law. And he shares all of that here. And then he says in verse 7, he says, you know all of these things that were gained to me. He says, look, I don't even care about them anymore. Paul had spent years focused and obsessed and concerned and preoccupied with maybe status and adherence to the law and pedigree and all of these types of things. And now he goes, look, I don't even think about them anymore. I don't care about them because of him. Because of him. He goes on in verse 8 and he says, indeed, it's true. I count all of these things as loss in comparison, in comparison to knowing Jesus. You know, I, you know, I'll tell you, I got into this this week, and um, I, was, I was telling Pastor Danielle, this was kind of uh, going in different directions, and, 
You know, the facts are is that, you know, in this life, church, we're going to have concerns. We're going to have cares. I don't have to tell any of you about that. You, you, you know that. I understand that. These are the things of, of life. But when these issues and cares and concerns, when they start to preoccupy us and consume us and become the theme of our life and our heart, And I'll tell you, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a work in progress on this one. Again, I love how Paul says the, the primary way to deal with loss when in comparison to Jesus is to count everything as loss. He says, look, I've suffered the loss of all things and I count them as rubbish. Like, are you serious, Paul? He goes, yeah, yeah, look, it's garbage to me when I consider them in light of the treasure I have in Jesus. You know, as we, as we close, uh, you know, this morning, I, I'll tell you in this season, look, I'll tell you, I pray that you're blessed. Boy, I, tell you, I pray that everyone here, boy, has a beautiful home and beautiful car. I really, I think that's, I think it's great, but I would just say, just hold it with an open hand, with an open hand. Take it or leave it. It's all lost compared to, to knowing him. It's all lost compared to knowing him. And, you know, again, this happened. We see this in the lives of, of, of people in the Bible, of Zacchaeus. It happened to Peter, to James, to John. It happened to, to Mary. And I, I just want to discover what Zacchaeus discovered. I want to experience what Mary experienced. I want to know what the pro fisherman Simon saw in Jesus to be able to pour out perfume and leave piles of fish on the ground. I want, to, I want to know Jesus in a real way. You know, and so this morning, again, as we um, get into the series of what it means to follow Jesus, uh, as we look at what it means for us to continue to, to carry on in the midst of our cares and concerns, is that we have a God who is offering us the greatest gift, not just his son, but the peace that comes through his son. And I think that peace is the peace, again, that transcends all understanding that will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And if you want that peace today, I think what's so great is that it's available to each and every one of us. If you feel overwhelmed, if you in the season, uh, we, we have a God who is offering that peace to us. And uh, I'm going to pray for you as we, as we close today. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. God, we thank you so very much for this opportunity that, you, again, you've given us to come and worship you. Father, I thank you for that peace, again, that transcends all understanding, that gives us an opportunity to continue to walk and follow you in the midst of all that is going on in this life. Father, I thank you so much for those that are here today. And, Father, we remember the ones that are not. Father, we think of Jack. Today, we think of his son, Doug. We pray that you be with them, that you bless them. We think of Tom, Stone, and the situation that he faces today. We pray that you continue to be with all of those that um, maybe you're hurting this morning. We pray that you be with them and their families in a very special way. We, we thank you so much again for hearing our prayer, for being active in our lives, and we continue to commit our heart and our life to you. Father, it is so great to trust in you. And these things we, we totally give to you. We trust you because you are our God, our Savior, and our King. And these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him It's so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just
us to rest upon his promise just to hold the saith the lord jesus jesus how i trust him how i've proved him more and more jesus jesus precious jesus all for grace to trust him more yes tis sweet to trust in jesus just from sin and self to cease just from jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace jesus jesus how i trust him how i Precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, save your friends. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more all for grace to trust him more all for grace to trust him more so much for taking time this morning to worship with us. Uh, hey, we want to just, again, uh, just encourage you to, uh, we're going to be uh, meeting at 1015 every morning, so thank you so much for, uh, for, for joining us. Our online service will continue at 3 o'clock every Sabbath, so for those of you that are worshiping with us online, it's so great to have you. You guys have a wonderful Sabbath, and we'll see you next week.